Good afternoon. I'm Tina Laster and you're at Laster Farm. Today we're going to be replanting this bed. We had our potatoes in this bed as you know and we're probably going to go over here and replant where our cabbage were. And the centipedes were all in this bed. Yes, the centipedes are great for the soil but our potatoes, some of them had rotted and they were eating on the rotten potatoes. They had not attached themselves and started eating on any of our good bright potatoes, but the ones that had rotted, they were eating on those. So I don't know how they're gonna do with me putting carrots and beets in this soil, but this is what I'd like to plant in here. And I know the months are gonna be getting warm and cause we're here in the middle of June but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try out these carrots and plant some um, uh, beets and just see, just see what happens. See how good they're going to make it or if they're going to die. We're just going to see what these seeds are going to do for us here in Tennessee. We're in West Tennessee and our days are starting to get hot. So... With that being said, I want to go ahead and get started and because it is kind of warm out here. So, let's get these planted up. I'm going to put, I'm just going to dig a little trench. Not a very deep one. I'm just going to kind of keep these kind of shallow. And I'm going to throw the big chunks of dirt out because I want them to be able to come through the soil. I may just scoot them over as far as I can get them. But I'm not going to plant them really deep. I know it looks like I am since I'm digging, you know, a little fur, a little feral. So let's just see, planting this like this so I'll know where they're going to go. And they're not going to be straight. They're going to be crooked. Okay. I'm going to start over here, I think, on this side with um, with the bait. Now, these are uh, a Ford Hook farm. They're an heirloom variety. And they're just a green leaf and uh, green stem. And they're, um, they're a winter keeper variety. Now, with that being said, I don't know how they're going to do in this heat. On the back up here, it says, for Tennessee, you're supposed to plant these March through May or August through October. So, with that being said, you know, We've done missed May, but I think we're just barely into June, so maybe these will be okay if I go ahead and get them going. So, and they are just light little brown seed. So let's just space these ever so often. I'm not going to plant them real close together. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of space them now. And if they do kind of come up close together, we'll just separate them as they start growing out.
I might be planting them a little thicker down here on this. I think I'm gonna go back here and put some of these. Cause I think, like I said, I think I planted them a little thicker on that other end. Okay. Now, there is my um, beets from here over. So I'm gonna just stick this right here so I'll know how far over I came with my beets. Okay, now let me go ahead and get these dug out for my carrots. I don't know how many carrot seeds are in those packs. Probably not very many. I really wasn't looking for a lot of seeds to be in those bait packs. But there was a pretty good amount. Okay, let's just see how far that gets us. Now also, this is a... Uh, Ford Hook Farm heirloom, and these are um, red cord, and it says on here to plant these also March through May for um, West Tennessee. So we're gonna go ahead. I don't have anything to lose. I'm just gonna go ahead and see how it turns out. And then I do have some Danvers. Um, I have some longs and some short skinny carrots. And these are so, so small. But I thought that they would grow better in this bed because I had sawdust in this bed. And I thought that it would be easier for them to push up through the soil. And this sawdust. Okay, let me get some more. Piece of glass in there. Another piece. Some of these sticks. See how far over I was with those carrots. Seeds look like dirt. <laughs> uh, let's see how far over I came. Looks like there's some there. Let's do this row. Okay, now, I am going to open one more pack, and let's see, I 
Okay, I'm going to use this pack. This is a uh, half. These are the long slims. And this one stopped right here. So I'm going to go ahead. And I got these from Pennington's. I'm not sure where I got those heirloom packs from. And these, uh, the store packages these up. So, we'll just see which ones come up. Make, makes these a little thicker in these rows. I'm just gonna mix some in with these. I don't think it'll matter that much because we'll know which ones are skinny and which ones aren't by the variety. Okay. Now, these, I'm not gonna put a lot of dirt over them. I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little dirt and that's about all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna put a lot of dirt and then I am gonna come back and I'm gonna put some plastic I'm gonna put some plastic over this bed so these can germinate but I'm gonna wet the soil really good miss the soil Okay, I just barely put the dirt over the carrots and the baits. So now, all we have to do is wet this bed, cover it with plastic, and kind of keep an eye on it. And when they just start to germinate, then we can take our plastic off. So that's what I'm going to do and get that all nice and moist. And then that way, I can have a chance to get started. And another piece of glass. Looks like a fruit jar has gotten broke. It could have from one of the ones that we put in there to cover other plants with. But I'm going to run over here and I'm going to get the water hose and bring it over and I'm going to miss the soil. barely misting and if you're wondering where this came from 
this thing has been around a long time. There's no telling how old this thing is. It's got the old little turn on and off switch right here. But it's been a good little thing. I had another one on here, you know, that had the three foot extension on them and then you just push the little hold the little nozzle and it it squirts the water out the other end but i don't know what happened it broke and anyway it kept leaking around the handle and i liked it because it had a long nozzle on it but this little thing right here my father-in-law used to have a couple of these and uh i think that's where i ended up getting these So that's gonna pack that down nicely to the dirt. You don't have to make soil contact because this, the um, water is making the soil, making the seed have contact with the soil. It's patting it down because the seeds are so small. Okay. That's good. And while I'm watering, I probably need to water my peppers. They are looking a little hot and run down. Definitely looking a little run down. Looks like we've had one that's died on this right there. I'm gonna water it anyway just in case it decides it wants to come up. Let's just stand back up. I need to get some stakes out here and stake it off. It's such a beautiful day. It's a good time to get out here in the afternoons. Okay. Now, my other bed. I'm not sure really what I want to put in that bed. But we do have a lot of seeds to choose from. But I still don't know what I want to put in there. I just ended up soaking these. So, okay, there's some more carrots. And I just, this seed thing got wet and so it's opened up here. So, we could do some more uh, beets. And I do have some garlic scapes. This bed uh, is where I had the cabbage. And it could use a little tilling up. And it really needs to be topped off with some more soil. But, as you can see, my soil has been depleted. I don't really have any extra soil made up right now to go in this bed. 
everything that we do have. I'm afraid it would be too hot to put on this garden right now. I'm afraid it would burn it up, the plants, before they even had a chance to grow. So, we're just gonna take our chances with this soil here and just see what we can get to grow in it. The cabbage did great. I love this little tool. Piece of wood. Puppies are out here fighting, playing underfoot. <laughs> and while we're getting this done, just a reminder, my basket giveaway is gonna be done Saturday. So, I'm gonna post the video on either Friday or Saturday and just let you know to see how many people are gonna be coming in on that video to see the basket. And I need you to put on there that you want to be in the drawing for the basket and you'll have to do that either through my Facebook page when I post the video to Facebook or you'll have to do it through the YouTube channel with that video underneath that Pacific video that has the basket on it. Because I definitely want you in the drawing because a lot of you, you got your uh, subscription listed as private and I can't view you as a subscriber to my channel. So please get your name in that drawing for the basket because it will definitely be uploaded this weekend. And um, depends on how many people have uploaded to that, I will definitely draw out the winner this week. And so, and then I'll have another video posting who the winner is. So I would like several of you to participate. Right now, we're at 127 subscribers. I'm telling you, the last couple of weeks, y'all have really stepped up and subscribed to my channel. And I am so thankful. The Lord is just growing my channel out. And I am so blessed to have you as part of my family. And I can't wait for you to see who the winner is going to be of that gift basket. And it's going to have farm things in it. It may have seeds in it. It may have, who knows what it's going to have in it. But... I just wanted to do that basket for the ones that have already got on board and subscribed to my channel and stepped up and subscribed. I am so thankful. And that's just kind of saying thank you for subscribing to my channel. Also, when we hit the 200 subscribers, I'm also gonna give away something there as well. So who knows? And all the way up until we get to a thousand and then then I'll do it probably every thousand, give away something. And also, around Christmas time, I'm gonna give away a gift basket of my canning stuff. I'm gonna, some of the stuff that we've canned over this year, if we get things canned, if anything produces, and I can some things up, I will be fixing a gift basket full of groceries, my canning stuff that come out of this garden. So, you wanna get on board for that, so. That will be a great treat. And uh, I can't wait to see if these tomatoes make. I mean, we've got the green tomatoes on. I could go ahead and pull some and make, can those green tomatoes up because we are low and I am going to have to can some green tomatoes. But I'm trying to wait and hold off and wait till those tomatoes uh, bear and turn red and then get my green ones toward the end of the season. And uh, that's usually what I do. And then I'll can those smaller ones up 
much that are left, you know, as my green tomatoes. Because we eat on those green tomatoes all year. And they are wonderful. All you have to do is put those green tomatoes, slice them like you would if you were going to fry them up. Just slice them, put them in your jar with about a fourth of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt. I know it sounds like a lot. I do them in, I do them in the big mouth pints. And I also just pour the hot water over the top of them. And then I can them for about 15, 20 minutes. If you can them really any longer than that, they're gonna be just mush. And when they come out of the canner, you know, you know, you put them on your shelves or whatever. And then when you get ready to take them off your shelf to fry them up, you know, you batter them with your flour or your cornmeal or whatever you put on yours. I just put regular flour on mine. I dip mine in milk and then I dip them in flour and then I put them on there. Because I don't like to worry with the cornmeal and it falling off on my skillet and then burning my grease and have to change up my grease every, every time you put a layer in. I don't do that. So I really like them with the flour on them, just the basic flour. And I don't put an egg on mine. I just put the milk buttermilk is really better I dip them in the buttermilk and I put them in there and fry them up but like I said when you take them out drain your water off and you keep them in your jar while you're draining them off and then you put I put cold water over the top of them and I kind of rinse them and then I just turn them upside down again and I rinse them a couple of times like that in the jar because if you take them out and pour them out in something and then you put water over them they're gonna start getting mushy, so you don't wanna handle them that much, you know. So after you drain the water off of them, you know, dip them in the milk and get them out of that milk and get them battered because if you leave them in the milk very long, they'll turn to mush, but you can still fry them up. I've done some of them that have fallen apart and I just put them in the batter and it puts a hard crispy uh, shell around them and they're still just as good even though they're all falling apart but because you know how good they are okay now this soil is a little bit lumpier and it's not it's got a little bit more hay in it than that over there that's broken down a lot more than this for our area for Tennessee it says that these need to be planted in uh, let's see, it can, they can be planted March through August, so we're okay. We're okay with these. And there's not a whole lot of seeds in this pack. They're just little bitty black seeds, about a little bit bigger than a pen head. They're very small. I don't know if you can see those or not, but they're just like... Well, they're bigger than an ant. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm gonna get over here, and I guess I will plant these on this side. Let's see how we get these going. I'm just gonna fix a little row right through here. And yes, this rabbit, well, I've had these rabbits probably 20 something years, and I've got several of them. Every year when my kids were small, my big kids and my little kids, my teenagers, I had these in my garden and I'd always fix my garden like Peter Rabbit's garden and I'd have rabbits all the way through it. And I still have Peter and a couple of the other ones up there on my back porch. And I haven't brought them out here and put them in the garden. But this one I had in the garden all year. And then when we were tilling these garden beds, I set it here next to this little pear tree. Well, Steve come in here and mowed between the beds before we put the plastic and the rocks down. And he ran over and chopped up my little rabbit. So, Liz said, we're going to keep his head and fix it where it looks like he's coming up out of the soil. So, anyway, she couldn't bear to throw his little head away. So, anyway, he didn't have any parts left. They were just... You know, 100 paces. But, let's see if we can. I'm just going to make one big thick bed, I think, of these garlic chives here. Okay, I'm going to. I'm scared if I 
bury it, I would realize where it was. Okay, so there's my chives. And I want some dill to grow. And for dill, this says the same thing. You can plant these March through August. My dill that I bought, put over there in that garden bed, it didn't make at all. Just absolutely died. And I'm terrible at killing dill. I'm just, I'm not that great at keeping dill alive. So, and I need a lot of it because I can, you know, a lot of pickles. And I would love to have a lot of dill. But, we will see. I really need to probably plant this on the other end because dill gets pretty good size if it makes it. So, let's just start it over here. And, uh, and that way, give it plenty of room to grow. Put it up here kind of close to the bed. And uh, that way, if it leans over or anything, we can stake it off. And these seeds are smaller than the... Uh, garlic scapes, the garlic seeds. These are really small and these are like a little tan seed. So I'm going to try to plant these kind of thick and I'm hoping that these will do good. These, some of them are stuck down in the bottom. There we go. Okay, so we have now, okay, so we have our, we have our deal and we have our garlic. Now, these are some more beets and some more carrots. So beside these I'm gonna plant these other beets. These are a Detroit dark beet. And so these are um, something else that I got from Pennington's. So I'm gonna just start planting these right in here. I'm just gonna plant them in a row. And I'm gonna give them a little space over here because I do not want them to interfere with my garlic. I may plant several rows of these. Let me say, I've got quite a few here, so let's just go on down. And I could just throw these out there and just, you know, broadcast, sow them, and just spread them. But I want to know that I'm not weeding out what's coming up. So if I keep them in a little row, maybe I won't weed them out and pull them up or steve on them anyway. Steve is really not a beet fan. He says they taste like dirt. So, in Steve's day, <laughs> he wouldn't eat pickled beets either. Mm, they both think they taste like dirt. rows of them. Okay, now. And then this is some more Danvers carrots. And I just opened the end and they just went everywhere. Because my package was damp from my water hose. Okay. I may just go ahead and plant these here in the middle. I'd like to plant some spinach and I've got just a little bit of space here that might work for the spinach. Okay, let's see if I can get all this, uh, these out. Okay, just right here. 
I'm just going to plant this in one row because these seeds are so small. Okay. Now, I think that's all I can do here. So, let's get these covered up before the birds start getting them. I'm just going to lightly cover them like I did over there on that side. Hardly any soil because they're really small. Seeds over here just a little bit bigger, so give them just a little bit more. Okay, that's that side over here. Well, our coney cone, she is pregnant, and we have her, we separated her and Rufus, and um, not sure how far along she is, but she's definitely pregnant. So, moved her yesterday and put new hay bedding inside of her pen and up in her, her, uh, house and so and then we put him in the other big house over here and separated them and he didn't like that so he broke the cattle panel that was nailed to the um post and he's made it one bigger pen and because i had a pen in between them and he didn't like that so come back out here to feed this morning and he was in the pen next to her so but it doesn't have a really good shelter in that pen. It has dog houses. And he will get in there in the dog house and he'll lift the top of it up. He'll fit in there and he will sleep in there, but sometimes he wants to pick up the top. So let me get some water. and Liz came from the neighbors across the street and the puppies saw them and they were scared to death. Let me get one more squirt of water. Cover those with some plastic and um, there we go. I think what I'm gonna do, I keep looking at these pepper plants, they look terrible. These two big ones, they have some peppers growing on them right here. I could go ahead and pull them and let it go ahead and start flowering some more. They're starting to flower right here in the top. There's one, there's two, 
and it's got some little bitty peppers so I may just go ahead and pull these I'll just go ahead and do it since that one came off in my hand and that way it'll help maybe keep the plant from putting its energy into these and uh, that way it can kind of maybe recover and this one has one that started so I won't pull it but these will be great for tomorrow I've got some um, Steve grilled up some um, chicken thighs boneless chicken thighs and I had that and made chicken alfredo tonight with some of the uh, bow tie pasta and it was so good and then we put you know the cheese on it it was just wonderful and tomorrow he said well the grill is still hot what do you get me a fix on it for tomorrow for lunch and I said well I've got a couple of um, steaks in the refrigerator so they would they've been in there marinating so he put those on the grill so uh, got those in the fridge for lunch tomorrow so I'm gonna add these peppers to them and we'll make us a uh, steak fajita that'd be great so anyway I need to get out of here and I probably need to pick my cucumbers and because they're they're getting to the right size so but for now we're gonna get off of here because this video is gonna be long if we don't. And don't forget to uh, be looking for my videos on the gift basket for this weekend because I definitely want to get you subscribed and I want to get you a chance to win that basket. And uh, anyway, if you share, let me know that you shared it with someone and they've subscribed. That will really help my channel. And they're, they can also get in the uh, drawing to win the gift basket. So just let all your friends know, hey, you want a chance to win this gift basket, go subscribe to Tina Laster's channel. I sure would appreciate it. And thank you for joining us here today at Laster Farm. And God bless you until next time. We'll see you back here. Bye.